We are now going to look at the rebates which are available for natural persons against their normal tax. Now, if we go back to our tax framework, the first thing I just want you to see is where these Section 6 rebates are sitting. So, you've calculated the taxable income. You will then calculate the tax per your tax tables. And then, this is the section we're looking at now. Section 6, the rebate section over here, it again gets deducted from the tax per the tax tables. So please make sure that you see where it is positioned. It is directly after calculating your tax per the tax tables. It is before any adding your other taxes, deducting your section 6A and 6B or um, uh, medical deductions. Section 6 quad over here, right? Section 6 quad is also a section 6 rebate. You can, though, include it in any of these two places, wherever you feel fit. Um, I do recommend keep it with all the other section 6s, although it's not the end of the world. Okay, so section 6 quad is that exception there. So please just make sure it's directly after your tax for your tax tables. Now, you get three different types of rebates. There is what is called a primary rebate. This is the rebate which is available for every single taxpayer. There is the secondary rebate. This is only available for taxpayers which are 65 years or older or taxpayers who would have been 65 if they had been alive at the end of the tax year. So, for example, if um, Mr. X is 64 years old when he dies in December, let's say it's 2025, right, and we're in a 2026 tax year, let's say his birthday is, well, let's say was, 15 Jan. So, that means on the 15th of January 2026, which is before our tax year end of 28 February 2026, he would have turned 65 then. So, if he had been alive at the end of the tax year, he would have been 65. He would have been 65. So, he also qualifies for the secondary. So, if you're 65 or older, you get the primary and the secondary rebate. If you are 75 or older, you get what is called the tertiary rebate. Then you get the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary rebate. Now, guys, these rates you can find in Section 6 of your Act. It is also should be provided to you in your tests and exams. Don't study it off by heart. Go and get the sections there. It changes all the time. Basically, this primary run over here is based on your tax threshold for when you start paying taxes. So if you have to gross this one up to 100%, whatever that amount is, times 100 over 18, you'll see it's equal to whatever the tax threshold is. That's basically how it works out. So it works out that if a person earns the minimum amount of the tax threshold, they will pay no tax. Right, then just about, here's a question. What about apportionment? So in other words, apportionment, let's say this amount over here is 20,000, just an example. It's not the amount, it's the example. When do you apportion it, for example, by 6 over 12? Now, apportionment, you only do it when the person dies, when they are born, or when they become insolvent. Insolvency and birth, they are treated in the same manner. So basically what happens is the following. Remember, a, tax, a natural person's tax year runs from the 1st of March until the end of February, 28th or 29th February, depending on if it's a leap year or not. Now, if a person was born on, I'm just going to make it a little bit simpler here, let's say they were born on the 1st of December, then it means from December until February, it's December, January, February, three months. Right, and before that period is nine months. That means you will take this, whatever your rebate amount is over here, for each of these, X, Y, Z, and you will multiply it by 3 over 12, 3 over 12, 3 over 12. Section 6 speaks about a portion per month, not per day. 
Right. If a person, this is if a person was born, so you only give it for the portion that the person was alive. It can also be not that the person is born, but that they die. So then they were only alive for nine months. So then you would take these amounts, whatever they are, and you would multiply it by nine over twelve. The same also for um, insolvency. Now, why am I pointing this out to you? It's important to understand there's only these three situations. So when a person is alive or dead, or insolvent or not. Right, alive or dead, those are the ones which are important for you as a CTA student. Alive or dead. Now, born or dead, birth or death, <laughs> rather. Now, why am I saying this? It's important for you to understand. Let's say a student, let's say here, yeah, Miss X finished her studies in December. She was a full-time student. She begins working in January. Now, her tax year runs from March, one March, until end Feb. She starts working in January over here. So, she earned income for two months. Can you see? When we are calculating her tax, so that taxable income and everything, how many months are you going to give it to her here for? You will give her the full amount. So x times 12 over 12. But you'll say, but she only worked for two months. That doesn't matter. That's not how tax works. Tax works for a period that you could be assessed, and you can only be assessed if you're alive. And she was alive. So for 10 months of the year, she didn't earn income. But she still qualifies for the annual primary, secondary, or tertiary rebate, depending on her age. All right. 